From his work in nightclubs, Tristan Duplessis leans towards darker colors. He does so to set the stage for light. And to do it at home, he needed a place with enough natural light. Tristan, you've made quite a name for yourself locally as well as internationally. What led to your love for design? Ever since I was a kid, I, I loved design and architecture. Um, and I appreciated design from a young age. Always loved driving around looking at the, the newest, coolest houses and cool restaurants. Um, and luckily, I get to do that for a living now. You've renovated your house quite a bit. What was the process like? The process was amazing and difficult at the same time. I found probably one of the worst houses in the best area, which is Parkhurst. I've always wanted to live here. And we started the process, which took four months. It was a lot of blood, sweat and tears. But now we're here. It's not usual for a residential space to have such a dark color palette. That's actually the first thing I noticed. Because the Parkhurst stands are quite small, I wanted to work with that. And instead of designing a house, I wanted to create a space that felt like a New York penthouse. But with this house, I took a lot of risks. It's kind of part of my personality and I wanted to push some boundaries. So we've got all of the black and stone, but we've got our Cartier brass and orange tabletop, which is quite unexpected. We put the pool in the middle to bring that lightness and basically to focus the whole house onto the pool. So it's not this black, harsh exterior. And probably the biggest risk I took is I got David Briss from Cape Town to paint on my neighbor's wall. And I haven't had any complaints yet. I can't wait to see what other risks you took with the rest of the house. Tearing down internal walls revealed an open plan space. Once beams and columns had secured the structure, serious design could begin. Oh wow, Tristan, this is a very unique kitchen. You have designed a lot of high-end restaurants and your own kitchen was featured in the Design Joburg 2018. What goes into conceptualizing a space like this? Well, I think in any kitchen space, form should follow function. And first of all, you need to decide what you want your kitchen for. So for my kitchen, I wanted to create a very social space that became the heart of the home. Rather than just having someone slaving away in a, in a kitchen behind closed walls, I wanted this to be the central focus for the house. When it came to choosing the finishes and how the kitchen worked, there was a lot of practical consideration. On the top, we've got this solid granite piece that I can chop straight onto and clean off. When you look at all the drawers, there's a space for, for everything. You have such OCD. Sometimes I think that too. Um, I even created spoon holders here, so when you're cooking, you put your utensils in here, lift it out and wash it, so you can That's keep everything smart. super clean. So about washing, we did a full freeform basin here. Instead of just doing a normal drop-in basin, we've got two different levels. We did tinted glass to show off all the glassware. And my favorite feature is the black marble backdrop that we have, which is made with two solid slabs and backlit very gently with a hidden LED lighting. What made you decide to put this very big feature in the kitchen? Well, I love marble. I think it's amazing that it's just taken out of the ground. We just slice it up and we get this beautiful feature. I couldn't use it on any other tops because it's not practical, but I got to utilize it at the back here, creating quite a dramatic feature in the kitchen and definitely my favorite. So in the family dining area, I wanted to soften the space a bit, make it a bit more playful. I've taken a break from the strong linear lines running through and I've got a round table, the round lights. It becomes a bit more of a relaxed social space. I've got some quirky details that I picked up when I was in Los Angeles recently from Jonathan Adler. I've got really cool coasters, this quirky, maybe a bit edgy Sanix. Color. And a pop of color. From this sci-fi themed fixture to the understated lounge, the living area is as practical and comfortable as it is stylish. Okay, so this is my open plan lounge that leads onto the kitchen. The wooden slatting brings a completely different feel to the room. It almost draws everything together. Yes, well, we wanted to create some warmth with the wooden slatting. We picked up the marble theme and we've got this big floating marble fireplace. I've got all of my favorite books, my awards, my crowning moment, which was being the first best dressed person in 2017. On GQ! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we mix up different heights in terms of the tables. I've got my favorite piece that's come with me through all of my houses. But this is a very personal space where it's just me and my girlfriend and my dog. I can't tell if this is a TV set or an art display. Listen, it's a bit of both. It's such an interesting screen because you can switch between TV and displaying artwork. The thing I hate about having a TV in a space is when it's off, it's just this big black box. 
So now when it's off, at least it's displaying some art and it treads that line between art and TV. Working from the US to Italy and East Africa, Tristan has collected fascinating pieces. So is this where the wild things are? Basically, yes. <laughs> I've got a fascination with street art and I've got a lot of street art inspired pieces um, all around the house. I mean, there we've got our furry guy. I've got a piece by a collective that comes out of Los Angeles called Circle. They actually came to South Africa a while ago for one of my projects. They did this huge, beautiful mural at Gemelli in Bryanston, which was really successful. And I bought a couple of their pieces. And my two core sculptures, which are probably my favorite things in the house. In the whole house, out of oh, all the most beautiful things you've shown us. Probably, yes. Shows I've got like a little bit of a weird taste when it comes to my art and stuff like that. And then walking down the passage, I've picked up my love for art. I've got the smaller David Britz pieces tying up with that big mural outside. I like the idea of having that juxtaposition of the big piece and these smaller pieces framed. I've got two more circle pieces and then a really cool, maybe evocative piece by John O'Wood at the end. The master suite sees a change of gear. So this is the, the main bedroom. Beautiful, I love how you've carried through the theme, but somehow this is much softer. I've tried to keep it quite minimal. It's just things that I feel comfortable being around. I see you play around quite a bit with the lighting. Yes, well, I love light fixtures, and I just love them as more art pieces than just giving you practical light. Maybe they don't all make sense together, but I just wanted to create a space that was curated just for me. And of course, elements of monochrome and the marble going into the bathroom. Yeah, so we've pulled the monochromatic feeling all the way through. It's just something I feel comfortable in. And then picked up the marble finishes just to add a bit of glamour to the bathroom. The rest of it has this concrete finish, which is quite hard. And that juxtaposition of having the marble below it just makes it feel a bit more elegant. Absolutely elegant. The design is meticulous. But Tristan and his model and makeup artist girlfriend Kendall Aberdeen are happy for their new pup Mishu to have the run of the place. So the renovations are done. Are you happy with how it all turned out? Yes, definitely. A lot of work, but almost there. You know, I think when you take on a renovation like this in four months, it's always going to be stressful. Mm. But it's amazing looking around now once it's, it's done, being able to create a sanctuary out of what was once just a building site is amazing. Kendall, which part of the house is your favorite? Definitely the kitchen. It's a beautiful open space. We spend most of our time there as a family and it's a great place to entertain. Tristan, having acquired all this interior design experience, what advice would you give to young budding designers? Well, I think the most important thing and the thing that I found when I go overseas with my international work is it's important to stay authentic to the way you perceive design to be. I think South Africa has a spirit of design and I think we should lean more into that than trying to emulate European or American styles. From here, our master designer opens a new hotel in Italy, then a bar in Dubai, in between taking Mishu for walks.